I will give you as a light to the Gentiles, and kings shall come to the brightness of your rising. Good morning. Good morning. And happy Feast of the Epiphany, this Epiphany Sunday. A warm welcome to you all, and a very warm welcome to our baptism family, the Epiphanos. Today we have the joy of celebrating the baptism of Maeve Sturges Epiphano, who's here in the front row. So welcome to all your family and relatives and friends. We're so glad you're here. Um, it's a joy to see you on this bitter cold morning to celebrate this feast. Um, we have cranked up the heating system, uh, and it just can't seem to get above 62. So I hope that you're warm enough, but you know you might want to just keep your coat around you or something. Our service begins with the opening sentences in your leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us who know you now by faith to your presence where we may see your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And the children are invited, if they would like, to go downstairs for Sunday school, and they'll come back for the baptism. If they'd like to follow Andrew Ancona, who's our Sunday school teacher today, uh, we have a special uh, Three Kings lesson for the kids, since it's Epiphany. So here come some kids. Great. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. And if you change your mind, it's right under the church in the undercroft. The reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise above you, upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe the star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea. <clears throat> For so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Amen. Amen. I wonder if one of our acolytes could light this candle for us, if they have the ability. Thank you. This is the baptism candle, the Paschal candle, and we always like to have it lit for Easter. Thank you. Epiphany is such a day of rejoicing. It's a wonderful feast to arise and shine and welcome the light of Christ into the world, which is what happened at Christmas. You know, Jesus was born. The morning of Epiphany dawns uh, when the star shines over the place where the Christ child lay. And we remind ourselves, a light has dawned that will never go out, a light of faith and hope and joy that shines in the ki all kinds of darkness that can afflict this world. So I wanted to have the symbol of the light 
here with the Paschal candle. The light of Christ is what it, what it symbolizes. So it's a day of light because of a star that leads to light. And it's also a season of light that begins today. So for the next seven or eight Sundays before Lent, we're going to celebrate the light of Christ in different gospel stories, fabulous stories about Jesus. So stay tuned in this season of Epiphany. This day of light celebrates the hope of the Christ child. It's traditionally a special occasion for baptism. And so isn't it amazing that this morning we have a baptism of little Maeve, who is about six months old. And today we give thanks for her birth and we welcome her into God's family through this community of Trinity Church here in Southport. I also have to note that Maeve Epifano has a very special last name that echoes this feast, Epifano Epiphany. Isn't that great? We couldn't have planned it better. The three magi, the wise men from the east, some say they may have been from Persia, go to extraordinary lengths to find the light. They follow this star. They were expecting to find the miraculous. And they remind us how wonderful it is to have an attitude of expectancy and hope. Christians are known for that, that we approach life expectantly. We're looking for the light, always. We're eagerly expecting the miraculous when we're seeking God. These wise men are foreigners, so they, they teach us, like so many other stories in the Bible, that outsiders are often chosen to show us the way to the true light, to the epiphany or the revelation of Christ. Now the Magi followed an unusual star on their journey. In those ancient days, many believed in astrology. And it's not hard to see why astrology would be so appealing to the ancients. We know it's very appealing to those who are navigating on the sea, sailors. Before electricity, stars were the night lights of humans. They had distinct patterns in the sky. You think of the cold, clear nights we've just had in the last few days, and how those stars just seem to jump out at us. But the stars can represent the order of the universe to us. And so when a star would disrupt that pattern, maybe a comet shooting across the sky, observant ones paid attention. And we don't know what star the Magi saw, but there's a star that arose around the time of Christ's birth called the Dog Star Sirius, also known as Masori, which in Egyptian or Arabic, I guess, meant the birth of a prince. Could that possibly have been the star that the wise men followed? We don't know for sure, but it's an intriguing thought. This star that led the wise men to Bethlehem following that star, and it came to rest over the place where the Christ child lay. So what the astrologers were looking for is actually found in Christ. We see that even astrology surrenders to the great light of Christ. For these wisest travelers kneel down and worship the newborn king. Now legend has it that the wise men were kings, and, and so we don't know for sure that they were kings, but legend has developed and, and given them names, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, the three kings. And they brought gifts to the baby Jesus, who lies in poverty, lies in a, a manger of hay. The first wise man offers the gift of gold, and gold, which is the king of metals. Gold is really the strongest metal. has to be, in order for it to become molten, the heat has to rise to a super high degree. Maybe you've seen that series about Queen Elizabeth called The Crown, where the opening uh, the preface to the show has this image of gold, molten gold, flowing through space. And then it's formed into a crown. It's kind of a neat image showing the beauty of gold. But Jesus we acknowledge as the king of kings. So. That's why this gold is symbolically given to Jesus. He does not reign by force, however, like so many earthly kings. He reigns by love. And he is to rule over our hearts, not from a throne, but by making himself vulnerable and by giving his life on a cross so that we might have a more abundant life. And what's the second gift? The second gift is frankincense. 
And that is known symbolically as a gift for a priest. Because in ancient temple worship and the temple sacrifices thousands of years ago, the sweet perfume of, of frankincense would mask some of the animal smells that would be in the temple. The function of a priest is what? It's to open the way of God to others, to be an agent of reconciliation between earth and heaven, between humans and God, between humanity and the divinity. And that's what Jesus was. He was the bridge builder. He was the agent of reconciliation who makes it possible for us to be reconciled with our God no matter what. We always have that op opportunity of reconciliation and also to be reconciled with one another. He gives us the incredible gift of forgiveness. And he is the one who allows us, you know, it's through Jesus Christ that we as Christians come into the presence of God, into the presence of the holy. What is the third gift? The third gift is myrrh, and myrrh is the gift for the one who is to die. He's just been born, so it's weird that six days later, you know, um, Epiphany, or how many, what is it, 12 days later, 12th day of Christmas is Epiphany, 12 days later, myrrh is presented, symbol of death to a newborn baby, but we know that Jesus is to die at a very young age for his people, but also to rise again. So all these gifts are given to the anointed one. The anointed one is what Christ means, uh, Christ in translated from the Greek or the Hebrew, means the anointed one, the Mashiach. And that's a crucial term in Matthew's gospel, used to describe the role of Jesus from the time that he's born until the time he goes to the cross. So he's prophet, priest, and king, recognized in these three gifts. And what did Mary and Joseph do? They accepted these treasures. We don't actually have that spelled out in the gospel reading, but they took the gifts. And... I imagine that they probably, these gifts probably gave this poor, impoverished couple the wherewithal to escape to Egypt to get away from the evil King Herod who was out to destroy this baby who was a threat to his sovereignty. And they fled down to Egypt, which was a long trip in their time. And these gifts would have sustained the family in a foreign country until it was safe to return again. And I wonder, uh, as we think of the assets that we have and how we invest them, how can we be like the wise men who invested in what matters? They invested in Christ and in Christ's kingdom. Epiphany is such a beautiful story about outsiders who are the heroes, who see the beautiful star and follow it, who see God's word in their dreams, and they listen to that dream that says, you must go home by another road, how often have we um, gone back home in a very circuitous route? When we listen to God, we can find that path home. And we can be like these wise men who give to the poor, who recognize and honor the anointed Christ who will bring God's community into being. This story really is about God's revelation of Jesus not just to the Jews, but to the whole world. So may God grant us the grace to venture forth like the Magi, to seek God's word and to give to the poor and to build the beloved community for Christ's sake. Amen. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. You say, I present. I present. We present, we present. May Sturges Epifano. Oh, Let's start see? again. You guys all say this together. Oh, I, we do. I present, right, right. and everybody oh, says oh. I. Everybody oh. says I. Okay. I present May Sturgis Epifano to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will with God's help. Okay, godparents, you say I will with God's help. I will with God's help. Will you, by your parent prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with the best help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? I renounce them. Come on in. 
Do you renounce the evil powers of this world, which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. And now, congregation, will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support little Maeve in her new life in Christ? And children, I have a question for you. Will all of you guys keep Sunday school going so that when Maeve grows up and she's big enough for Sunday school, it'll still be there for her? Will you do that? You say, we will. We will. Okay, I couldn't hear you. Wait, I couldn't hear you. Say again. We will. Thank you. Thank you. Let us congregation, let's stand and renew ourselves, our commitment to Christ by renewing our own baptismal covenant, and it's found on page 304 in the Book of Common Prayer. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and the Lord of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Will you, do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of God, and the life of God's Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers, which is all the things we do here on Sunday mornings? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, God's help. And we know the good news is the love of God for each and every one of us. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Then let us now pray for Maeve, who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. And do we have a prayer? Would you do the honors? <laughs> Deliver her, O oh Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving <laughs> spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, hear our prayer. And now we'll add in the prayers for the sick. Sheila, would you just, do you have those prayers? Oh, okay, I, I have them. <laughs> um, we pray for those in our parish who are sick, especially Patricia, Jay, Chris, Mary Anderson, Michael, Jonathan Scott, Mia, Karen, Janet Gillis, Jan Perry, David Gibbons, Elizabeth, Wanda, Sean Sullivan, Julie Lewis, Lori Bovaru, Patricia, Claudia, Jim Miller, Sarah Lou, Rosie, and Pierce. And I invite any others that you may like to pray for. You may name them silently or aloud.
Alice. Carl. Fanny. Wanda. Is there anybody you want to pray for? Elizabeth? Anybody else you want to pray for? Lord, hear our prayer. And we also pray for those who have died, who have gone before us in faith, especially those we now name, silently or aloud. We pray for Henry Bonner, who was buried from this church yesterday. Lord, hear our prayer. And grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory, who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. Okay, now Wells is going to um, pour the water. Wells, here. Can you take the handle? Okay, now step back here so everybody can see. And pour it in that, pour it in that bowl. Make a spot. The Lord be with you. I need to read it. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Thanks and praise. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. And in it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. So we thank you, Father, for this gift of the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, in obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who, have here cleansed our, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Can you hand me that towel? Thank you. I need that towel. I need that shell. I need that shell. Thank you. Name this child. Nate Sturgis Epifano. <laughs> Maeve Sturgis Epifano, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you. Now, can you hand me that little silver thing? This is the chrism. <laughs> Maeve Sturges Epifano, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant Maeve the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized, saying together, it's in your bulletin, we receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, 
and share with us in his eternal priesthood. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Peace, me. Isn't that a wonderful way to welcome the new year by having the newest member of the church, Maeve, joining this congregation. And congratulations, Maeve. <laughs> We're so happy to have you baptized today. The Epiphany is really one of my favorite feast days of the whole year. Such a joy. And I'm grateful to you all for showing up in this bitter weather and sharing in the celebration of Maeve's, Maeve's big day. Um, there's a wonderful coffee hour happening after this. So if you want to get some nice warm coffee or tea or, uh, and some refreshments, please join us in the parish hall. And um, please know that everyone is welcome into all of our ministries. Whatever we do, you're more than welcome to join in. There's lots of announcements in the bulletin. Especially I want to point out to you that this Sunday, for Epiphany season, we're going to start a new prayer for our Eucharistic prayer. It's in our prayer book, Prayer C. So it has responses that the congregation, well, I'm just giving you a heads up. Uh, you're going to reply to things, in, and it starts on page 369 in the prayer book. We didn't print it out. We're going to do an experiment, like getting us to use the prayer book a little more instead of printing everything out, save a little bit of paper, but also you know, teach us what's in the prayer book. Um, so that's on page 369, Eucharistic Prayer C, after the offertory happens. We have special guests at the offertory. Three visitors from uh, the Far East will be joining us, and I want to thank them, because I won't have a chance later for participating in this service. You'll see, it's a special surprise for the children. They'll see who comes down the aisle very shortly. Also, Living Local Joining God is a new experiment of mission, a missional experiment uh, that we're trying out here at, at Trinity. And we have a forum. Uh, it happened. Are we meeting again after the service? I don't think so. Next Sunday at 9 a.m., um, we are going to offer a forum about living local. So please come to the library at 9 a.m. Come a little early, and you can hear about it. Charlotte Bartol is the leader of our parish guiding team. It's really about getting out into the community and listening, but also listening to the word of God in a, in a fresh new way. And how is God speaking to us? And how can we participate with what God is already doing? So it's a, kind of a paradigm shift instead of just staying in the church and waiting for us, waiting for people to find us here. We're paying attention to what God is doing beyond our doors. And how can we participate in that? This. We're one of six churches in our diocese doing this experiment. It's really fascinating, and I'd uh, love to have you learn more about it. On Monday, uh, the 15th, is Martin Luther King Day, Martin Luther King Jr., and there's a very special uh, service happening in West Haven at the Church of the Holy Spirit for the whole diocese. And we're going, Diane and I are planning to go, 
Um, it's going to be very special, meaningful service. If you'd like to join us, it's at 12 noon. Um, we can carpool somehow. We'll probably leave an hour before, I'm guessing, on that Monday. So we can meet at the doors at 11 a.m. if you want to go up to that service with us. Mission trip. Uh, we're having an organizational meeting for our mission trip team to the Rosebud Reservation of the Lakota Sioux. This will be our third year going at the end of June. Um, who, who's a mission trip person who is here? Anybody? Okay. Oh, there's Polly. Good. Polly and her grandson uh, went this past summer. If you're interested in going, we had about 10 people from Trinity who went both years. It's, it's an amazing experience. And oh, you were invited. Come to the organizational meeting. Uh, it's in your bulletin uh, on January 30th. And just one more thing, if I can beg your time. Um, on the inside back cover, every year at Trinity Wall Street, which is an amazing church and has amazing resources because it rents out so much land to Wall Streeters, um, Trinity Wall Street offers a, an institute. It's a two-day institute. We don't have to go down to Trinity Wall Street to be part of this wonderful educational opportunity. We can go to St. John's in Bridgeport Friday and Saturday. This only says Saturday, but it's actually Friday and Saturday. The presiding bishop will be speaking, as well as many other prominent speakers in the church, and it promises to be very exciting, called Values in Action. So if you'd like to join us, let me know. Or just show up at St. John's. <laughs> um, and uh, one more announcement. For that, just have them sign up as oh. soon as possible. If you want to go to St. John's Bridgeport to hear Trinity Wall Street Values in Action conference, just sign up on the link. Then they can and know the how many. The link people. is in the bulletin. And the link is in the bulletin. Okay. <laughs> um, any other? Oh, uh, our Sunday school director, Lori Bovaru, will be back next Sunday. Yeah. I'm really pleased. She's, she was quite ill in the fall. She's recovered, and we're so thankful. To and meanwhile, Andrew Ancona has been a superstar. I'm grateful. Andrew, just stand up for a second. He has covered Sunday school in her absence. Um, he's a seminarian, first year at Yale Divinity School, and we're just blessed to have him with us. Um, and don't clap yet, but I want to also just recognize Diane. If you weren't here at Christmas time, we clapped for her at uh, one service. She has been named canon in our diocese, which is an honorary title um, because of her steadfast, ongoing, wonderful ministry to the hungry in Bridgeport through St. Luke's and St. John's. And, um, so now she's not just the Reverend Deacon Diane Peterson, now she's the Reverend Canon Deacon Diane Peterson. So we're so proud of you. And thank you. <laughs> so lots to celebrate today. Um, all are welcome to God's table for the Holy Communion. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Thank you.
The Eucharistic Prayer C continues on page 369. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And our King, if you would like to sit over here. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation. But we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconcile us. By his wounds we are healed. And therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the next glory. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham and Sarah, Hagar, of Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob and Rachel and Leah, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor, 
glory and worship from one generation to another. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and rose again. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
closing hymn is number seven, if you want to set the page in the blue hymnal. Let us say together the post-communion prayer found on page 365 in your prayer book. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make the journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this Epiphany feast and throughout this season of Epiphany and always. Amen. Amen.